I'm Tom from Do-It-Yourself Home Automation, and this is a look at the back of my Fitbit Ionic here, uh, smartwatch. And you can see on the back, you've got a bunch of different sensors that are shining light into your wrist and reading um, basically biometric data. Um, and one of them is pretty obvious, the heart rate sensor. This is something Fitbit um, makes pretty readily available to users and has had in their devices for a long time. But one that might not be as obvious and that actually is not even included in the software on Fitbit yet is a pulse oximeter. Um, so this is basically a sensor that is doing a probably pretty basic rudimentary job of measuring the oxygen content of your blood, again by shining light into your wrist and then looking at the light that's reflected back. Um, and this is like if you go to the doctor's office and they put a little oxygen sensor on your finger with a red light and tell you a uh, percentage value for your oxygen level, it's basically trying to do essentially the same thing but built into this wearable device. And again, the sensor is there, but there's no way to actually access the data from it in any of the, uh, the Fitbit you know, user accessible uh, parts of the applications or anything like that. So why is Fitbit put it in there, uh, what are they planning to use it for, and why can't you start to actually see that data? Um, the last one I think is probably the most, most straightforward, why can't you see that data directly? Um, probably it's not accurate enough that Fitbit is willing to make it available because it's something that can be very clinically important if you have a medical condition. So if you have asthma or heart condition or something like that, then knowing your SpO2 uh, level is very important. And they probably don't want to give you the data if they don't know that it's very accurate because you might rely on that instead of going to the doctor to get a real reading from a medically accurate device. And you might um, think you're fine when actually your levels are dropping too low or something like that. So because it's not clinically um, at a clinical level of accuracy yet, they're probably just for liability reasons or to avoid any kind of issues, not making that data directly available to you because they don't want to lead you astray with it. Um, so that's the first thing there. Why would they include it? Um, definitely knowing your blood oxygen level is very important during exercise. It can help you to make sure that you're um, exercising at a level where you're still getting enough oxygen in your blood. Um, but what it's really important and useful for is measuring sleep um, and diagnosing conditions like sleep apnea where you're actually not breathing properly during sleep and um, you end up having your oxygen levels start to drop. And then also probably just variations in oxygen level during sleep and during the day are significant or useful data. Um, so that brings me to what I suspect is the first actual use of this data by Fitbit to do something that's helpful for the consumer. And that's in their new sleep score. So I showed this in another video. They're doing a private beta right now of a sleep score that looks not just at the stages of sleep and the amount of time you spend to sleep like they currently provide, but it also looks at um, breathing levels, they say, um, and gives you a score for revitalization, so how rested you'll feel after a given night's sleep. Um, so my guess is that they're starting to use the SpO2 or blood oxygen level sensor on the device to measure your oxygen levels throughout the day and then compare those to your oxygen levels at night. And that level of oxygenation is probably being used to uh, figure out what your breathing patterns are. And then they're probably using that information to generate part of their sleep score. Uh, to show you where even if you didn't get enough sleep by hours or you didn't spend enough time in each stage, maybe just from the depth of your sleep and your breathing patterns, they can tell you you're actually going to feel fairly revitalized the next day or vice versa. Maybe you slept a long time, but you didn't, you were kind of shallow uh, breathing and weren't getting a lot of oxygen and it shows that you weren't in a deep enough sleep. So maybe you won't feel great the next day. So my guess is that that beta sleep score is the first place that this SpO2 data is being used. Um, it's probably behind the scenes being worked into their algorithm, so you're not actually seeing the data directly, but I would bet that that's how they're uh, measuring some of these new things that factor into the sleep score. Um, and my guess is that in the future, maybe they'll reach a level of accuracy where they feel comfortable actually sharing the data with you. Maybe they'll use it to do alerts, you know, if you're exercising too hard and you're starting to 
you know, lose oxygen in your blood. Um, maybe they'll find other ways to make this data useful in the future. But my guess is that, again, that sleep score is the first place it's being used. Uh, if you found this helpful in any way, please subscribe to my channel. It really helps. And, uh, you know, obviously, disclaimer, I'm not certain about this, but this is just my own uh, guess about where that data is coming in.